Hi folks. So regular expressions are a really helpful tool or technique that once you understand how to do them, you'll use them all the time. Uh, and in fact, you'll discover that loads of the problems that you might have approached by having to sit down and write a long, complicated um, you know, program for, you can actually solve those challenges in a couple of lines in using a regular expression. So for extracting and replacing text, for finding things that are interesting within a, a whole lot of data that you have, um, if you have log files and alerts and things and you're looking for things that are interesting, regular expressions are often a really great tool to use. Um, if you are yeah, basically, once you understand how to do regular expressions, you'll see all sorts of uses for them. In terms of cybersecurity, if you're writing intrusion detection system rules, so like a snort rule, uh, you can often use regular expressions uh, there. You could use regular expressions when you're looking through security alerts and logs, or you know, just looking for specific kinds of behavior or events in log files. You can use the regu regular expressions for that. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a free-flowing demo, uh, and I'm just going to, um, basically, I'm going to open up the uh, Linux command line and start um, showing you how to use regular expressions. So I've, um, I've just downloaded a sample log file to give us something to look at. I've not looked at it in any detail yet. Um, and we can see here, um, uh, so we can see here that it is a fairly big log file. Um, and let's Let's have a look. So we can use less, um, which is, you know, obviously a standard Linux um, file reading um, program that actually ha happens to have regular expressions part built into it. So um, there is, I guess, a few things to say about regular expressions. One is that the various tools that can use regular expressions, there's not just one version of what regular expressions are, there's like a few variations and um, a lot of the Linux tools use a uh, like simplified version of regular expressions. And one of the main differences is whether or not you have to escape the special characters within a regular expression. That's the main difference between different tools that use regular expressions. Um, and so you know, we can do some experimenting and see, um, you know, what less is, is doing. We'll do that in a second. Let's just have a little manual look at this log file and see what's in there. So there's a bunch of login failures, so authentication failures um, from PAM, uh, SSH. So, so PAM is the authentication modules, pluggable authentication modules. SSHD, obviously, so there's someone trying to log in to SSH remotely, and we've got their IP address, um, and you can see they're trying to log in as root. Um, So sometimes our host is an IP address, and sometimes our host is a, a um, like a a resolved name um, for that for an IP address. And there's also examples where people have successfully. Switched user. So there's a u, u, uh, root user switching user to a specific 
user. There's some more authentication failures in here. Um, there's FTP server connections from IP addresses. Um, and yeah, okay. So there's a few things there. Um, all right, so if we um, wanted to look for something <clears throat> using regular expressions, we can start by um, just uh, putting a forward slash and then we can type a reg regular expressions. So the, the first thing is in a regular expression, you can include just plain text. So if I just put um, FTP um, day, you, if I search for that, then um, it will highlight where those things are come up. I can just scroll through and see where those are. If you um, press the N key, it kind of will cycle through each match. And if you do capital N, N it goes backwards. So you can go forwards and backwards through the matches <clears throat> um, to this very, very simple regu regular expression. Now, if we, um, let's do it on SSH D instead. Okay, so in this case, in with with less, it uses the um, uses like a a Perl compatible um, regular expression type approach uh, because when I started a um, uh, open bracket. It's treating it as like a um, special character, um, and so we can do um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some of the different um, things that we can look for in our regular expressions. So let's just switch to a new uh, like a fresh tab within the console and if we um, look at the manual page for Perl compatible regular expressions then we can uh, read about the different things that we can include in a regular expression. So there's an escape character um, so let's just go through a few of these um, and will um, help us to understand how to write regular expressions. So there's this list here actually um, is the vast majority of what you need to know in order to write really powerful regular expressions. There's not that actually, there's not, there's, there's a few like extra features and things you can learn, but if you can learn <clears throat> essentially this, you'll be able to do all sorts of fantastic things. So let's start with the carrot, the little uh, like up arrow. So the, the carrot asserts the start of a string or line. So if we search for um, carrot um, SSH D, that w shouldn't find any matches because it's not how any of the lines are starting. But if we start with carrot July, um, we'll match all of the um, events in July. Um, if we match July, start one space and then a six. No, they two spaces and a six. Yeah. So I guess it's the first space might be for uh, like a double digit date. So <clears throat> to get them to line up nicely. So if we do July two spaces and six, you can see here it's matched these lines. Okay, so good. So we know how to write a regular expression that starts at the beginning of the line. Um, let's say that within these, we want to look for something on the July 6th that is um, just SSHD related. So let's have a look at the this list of things. 
So, okay, the dollar sign is for the end of the line, that's not what we need. Uh, period is for matching any character except for a new line. Okay, so what if I put a dot there, what is that going to match? Okay, so you can see here, the, the dot can match, um, can match anything. So, I guess you could say, well, okay, I want to match anything up to the SSHD. So this is not the right way to do it, but let's um, just uh, start like this. So we want a whole bunch of anything, it doesn't matter what they are, and then we want SSHD. Right, so that gave us what we wanted. Um, so this is saying we want exactly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, spaces. 17 anythings. Um, but actually, we probably don't care if it's 17. We actually just want um, like as many um, as, what, you know, we don't really care how many there are. So if we look here, these ones here, we could say we could use an asterisk, which would say zero or more. Or we could do a plus, which would be one or more. Okay. So what if we do? Um, um, well, we want at least one thing, don't we? Like we don't want just to be directly after the date. So let's just put a plus symbol, um, plus symbol, and we'll see that this gives us the same result. So this is saying. Uh, at the start of the line, July 6th, and then we want it to be any thing, any, char any one character, but we want one or more of those, so just, you know, as many one or more characters as, um, as happens to be the case until we hit SSHD. Um, if we remove that SSHD part, what you'll see is it'll match right to the end of the line because it's like greedy, they're greedy matches, so it will match as much as it can, basically, uh, by default. So um, if you put a, an asterisk instead of a plus sign, we'll get the same result, but the, the difference is what it has to be, uh, it doesn't have to have any matches in order for the match to match, for the rule, like the regex to match something. Whereas a plus symbol guarantees that we'll have at least one um, so SSHD, okay, we could, um, you know, if we wanted to just look for any in July, um, we could update this, <clears throat> I mean, to look like that. So now we're finding, you know, the, these that come up anywhere in July, and, um, You can see there's a few different um, kinds of results. So there's session open and session closed, and there's the failures. Um, so there's a few different things that we could um, look for. Let's go back to our um, manual. So, okay, so we've seen that, we've seen that. Um, you can use lists of, of um, valid characters to match for. Um, so let's have a look at that. All right. So if we wanted to match July followed by um, any number, you could do zero to nine. Then um, we can see here. Got one space there. Uh, if I if the, I want it to match the single digit dates, then I need not found. Ah, right. <clears throat>
Um, okay, so we um, if we want to write some um, using this list feature, we could do something like this. Um, and so we're matching July followed by anything, followed by a number, followed by SHD. Uh, so there just has to be, basically for that to match, there just has to be a number somewhere between where it says July and where it says SSHD. Uh, we could be uh, more specific with it if we wanted to. Um, and basically just have um, you know the spaces and then the number. Um, this example um, Uh, doesn't when include the double digits. So if we want it to include double digits, we because um, the double digits only have one space rather than two spaces between July and then the number. So what we could do is actually have a second one here, um, a second list here. We could have a space or um, and zero to nine. So within this list. Within these square brackets, we can use ranges for 0 to 9, or we could put specific uh, characters or symbols. Um, and so in this example, you know, we've used a more specific thing. We're saying July, and then a space, and then either a space or a number, followed by another number, and then anything, and then SSHG. Um, and then we could do something like anything, and then authentication failure. So now we're picking out the authentication failures um, on, you know, within those within July. So you can see that it's, um, you know, quite a powerful uh, approach uh, where you can you, you can look for uh, things. So you, you can use a question mark to mean a few things. Um, so you can use it to either turn off the greedy matching, so it use, looks for smaller matches, or you can use it um, to mean zero or one of something. So that's zero or one. Uh, asterisk is zero or, or many. Uh, the plus is um, means one or more. You can also use um, curly brackets to specify exactly how many repetitions of something that you want. Um, and you can put things in, in brackets to like group them together. Um, you can even do um, within the match um, things like we want to have see either authentication failure or um, bear with me for a second because I have a uh, US, US keyboard on a So if we use a pipe symbol, um, so we're looking for authentication failure or a connection. Um, and now we can see Or am I, is that not the? Um, is it just because there's a lot more failures than connections? Uh, 
is it, no, it's session knife, is it? Yeah, session, session knife, and so, so we can uh, we can you know we can write regular expressions to look for exactly the things that we're interested in finding. Um, I think that's probably a good place to wrap it up because I don't want this to dr drag on too long. Um, but we've seen um, have we seen all these things? Um, so e ending a line is a dollar sign. It's pretty straightforward. So if you wanted to um, like match to the end wanted something to appear at the end of the line, you just include that. Um, and we've done all of those. Um, and I briefly just mentioned what that was. So I think that, I mean, really, just for with those bare, with that bare minimum of regular expression ability, you can now do all sorts of powerful matches um, and you know, that will help you to um, you know, look for things in um, lo large amounts of strings.